Hi, today I want to talk about the ESP32 and MQTT, a lightweight messaging protocol. And today I want just to focusing on the client side and also the important feature for me. I want to concentrate on the secure connection between client and server. So let us start with a look into the protocol specification first with the MQTT and I just skip all the chapters until I reach the security chapter and there's something we can use MQTT with a native TLS encryption. Maybe if we want to use SOX, we can tunnel it with an SSH protocol. But the only thing I want to consider today is um, using MQTT over the WebSocket network transport protocol, because this is the thing SyncSpeak supported. So if we want to know more about what's a WebSocket, we can read the RFC 6455 and maybe the important chapter in this documentation is how the WebSocket frames are built. But this is also one thing I mentioned later in my documentation. So let's see how SyncSpeak is set up with MQTT and I don't want to use an unsecure version so I cannot use this type. The only thing I can use is the secure SSL WebSocket connection with standard HTTPS port and standard WebSocket port it's also unsecure. So this is the only option for us today to use SyncSpeak and MQTT. Today SyncSpeak only supports publishing data. So I concentrate on the publishing part. So let's start with some MQT basics. First, the MQTT client have to connect to the MQTT server like SyncSpeak and the server have to send a connection acknowledgement to signal the client that the connection is successful and then the client can send the publishing packets and the client can repeat this until the connection is disconnected. And if we want to use the secure version of MQTT, like using SyncSpeak, we have to use the WebSocket protocol to connect to our HTTPS SyncSpeak server. Then the SyncSpeak server can switch the protocol by using the WebSocket feature. And after we have successfully switched the protocol, we can use normal MQTT. But if we just send the MQTT packages we are not successfully because we also have to use a WebSocket frame to send all our MQTT packages. So all the data is a little bit bigger because all is put into a WebSocket envelope and then we can send a connection like the unsecure version then receive the connection acknowledgement also with a WebSocket frame and then we can publish our data also via WebSocket. And then we can use the same connection like normal and publish more than one data in the same connection. So I take a suggestion from the ESP32 forum from Niall Colburn. He suggests to use the Payo client from Eclipse. So I use the source codes from Payo MQTT embedded C client. And sorry for this, but I strip all the things that are not necessary out of my project. And, and I don't use the unsecure clients that are come with this package. I just write my own wrapper to use the embed TLS secure connection. 
But before we dive deeper in the source code, just have a look at the practical demonstration. On the left side, we have the SingSpeak website. And on the right side, we have in real time our ESP32 debug output. So the ESP32 just do a connection via HTTPS to SingSpeak. Then the protocol is switched to MQTT and then we do a MQTT connection and wait for the acknowledgement and after the acknowledgement we just write five publishing data packages with two random numbers and just for the demonstration we can compare the random numbers we have sent via the ESP32 to ThingSpeak with the ThingSpeak website. So that's fits together and we can just watch all the data that are transmitted in one hour. So I now switch to time-lapse mode. So let's have a look in the source code. And before we start with the C code, just have a look at the make files. They are very short and just have two lines in the make files. And I just use the component include deals for the MQTT C client. And also I use my own embed TLS wrapper. And also I include the MQTT it. And that's all. So start with the main file. The main file starts with the MQTT publishing main task. And it's just a normal task where we initialize our Wi-Fi connection and create an MQTT task. And as normal, we have just an handler for our Wi-Fi connection and use our stored Wi-Fi SSID and our Wi-Fi password. And then we start with our MQTT task. So this is very small. We just set up our MQTT network connection with this function. Then we initialize the MQTT client with some buffers. And then we set some client protocol data like our client ID and the protocol version, I use the version 4 or it stands for MQTT version 3.1.1 and we use a keep alive session length like 60 seconds and then we just it's Establish a MQTT connection. And as I say, I just do a loop of five MQTT package in one connection. And here's the random number generation part with the ESP random function. Then we put together our MQTT payload and just publish this to our channel. So this is my channel ID and my write API key, but I just delete this after after I finished this video. So you can try this, but the channel no longer exists. So just create your own channel and use your own write API key. So after we successfully publish our data, I just do a loop of 30 seconds and then the whole publishing is repeated. Then we do a disconnect and disconnect also our network. And then we start the same task again and do everything from the start. So let's dive deeper in the MQTT wrapper. So first start with the MQTT network connection. We use, as I said, the embed 
TLS client and initialize the SSL connection with all the certificate and the random generator and so on. Then we set our host name. This is the MQTT server and we set also the HTTPS port somewhere. This is here. This. Then we perform an SSL handshake. And now this is the special part for the WebSocket protocol. We just initialized an HTTP GET request to switch the WebSocket protocol to MQTT. So we just send a very long string and this is the part where we switch to MQTT protocol. Then we write our SSL string to the server and wait for the response. And I'm very lazy so I just check if the respond is switching protocol but we can also do a secure version and check also the hash send it by the server but sorry for today I'm just too lazy to implement this and after we get our connection we switch back to our client so let's have a look at the MQTT connection and the important path is just the package sending so we send our packet with our client and we just use the MQTT write function and this is set up by our network initialization and we set our MQTT write and read to our own wrapper function and maybe we have just a look at the MQTT write function this is this and we don't send as I say the standard MQTT packets we just first do a WebSocket write and the WebSocket write just put the MQTT package in a WebSocket frame. And we can have a look at the WebSocket frame and the WebSocket frame consists of some control features. So we have inside the length of the package and also some coding how the package is interpreted. Maybe we want to use a binary package. So this opcode is set to binary and then we have our length of the package and if the length exceed 126 bytes then we use not only one byte for the length we just use two bytes for bigger lengths and if the length is also a little bit wider than two bytes then we have to use four bytes but sorry I'm too lazy today and I don't implement the bigger packages for the WebSocket protocol and also if we use uh, package masking then we use our mask key. The mask key is some four byte random numbers and all the data is bitwise mask with the XOR function. And if we don't use any mask and the frame just consists of the normal data. And if we receive a package, we do the same, but in opposite direction, we just cut out all the WebSocket frame and interpret the length and the masking and so on. So let's do a clean building and delete all our previous builded data. Then we compile all our code and wait for the compiling of all the needed packages. So it's as always very big <laughs> and the whole compiling from the scratch takes about maybe one minute. So let's wait. So there's our linker and we just, oh, only 38 seconds. That's nice. So let's press the flash make target and flash our firmware to our ESP32. So we finished in 11 seconds and that's all. So as always, you find the source code on my GitHub page and you can also visit my blog spot, but I don't have any time to update this. So I just concentrate on some YouTube videos and the source code. But I thank you for watching today and I hope you learned something. And if so, just use the thumbs up button. And also if you not already subscribed to my channel. Please subscribe and support my work. Thank you and bye bye.